something I wanted to ask you about. It, it seemed like you have this knack, or have had this knack, of finding other people to play with who are kind of on the same path as you, or maybe you create the path together or something, like Bobby and um, Joey and uh, uh, is it Nate from, from All Leather? Uh -huh. And, you know, I know you've done several bands with him. And even like Nick Zinner. Yeah. Like these kind of sound, <coughs> sound oriented people rather than like, you know, oh, I wrote the guitar or something. It's like these kind of experimental mentalities. Is that a San Diego thing or is that just, did you guys figure it out together? Or? Well, I mean, you know, Nick is a good example. He, he you know, he's, I mean, yeah, he's I sort he's of Los Angeles now, but he is basically New York. And, it, we we had like three one G had a pub a publicist that was working on the very first Yeah Yeah's record so like right when they started kind of getting big she introduced us and I remember like um, some some article came out like in Decibel or some like metal magazine it's like Nick Zinner likes metal or whatever you know and then he like talked about the Locust and I was like fuck that's weird and cool and then we became really good friends and then you know if you think about it like I mean the Yeah Yeahs were pretty weird for like. Like a large, oh, yeah. like yeah, a huge sure. pop band, and so, um, and uh, and and especially Nick, I think he's like really into fucked up stuff, and so uh, you know, well, like, and, and that that whole thing that came out of at that point. I mean, people look at the Strokes and things like that and say that was a New York thing, but I'm thinking of like X Models and Seconds and even Liars, Liars for yeah, sure. Yeah, you know, that was the, like, yeah, there was that happening at the same time and doing well, like they yeah. all kind of blew up, yeah. In a way. Yeah, it's, and that's so, some weird shit. But even Plus like models is weird. It's very weird. It's yeah. totally weird. But they were like, like brutal Devo, you know, oh, yeah. uh, abrasive and. But yeah, I, I think it. <clears throat> part of it could be. It's a good. That's a good question because I think part of it is sort of like, this mindset that I would like to say is like a San Diego thing because when I was growing up, it was kind of like we would always go to shows and and it would it would, well, like a good example was when I was when I was. Um, like when I was playing in Struggle, and um, there was, you know, like kind of like our sister band, which was Unbroken, which is like straight edge hardcore. And them in, in themselves is pretty crazy because they looked like Morrissey, they sounded like Slayer, and they were, you know, like a fucking hardcore straight edge band. And it was just the weirdest thing. But I remember like um, Undertow and Unbroken were doing a tour, and Click Attack Atali and Slant Six were doing a tour, and they oh. played a show together, and it was totally fine like everyone was like this makes sense <laughs> you know and like to the real world like it's like that's fucked up and that's yeah. weird and like why like most hardcore straight edge kids would not be accepting of slant six you know right. and it was it was like rad and it, like everybody was like oh yeah like this is cool and it was like it wasn't like the hardcore show and the weird show it was like i think it was like you know for whatever order it was like you know, like Undertow, Slant Six, Unbroken, Click Attack, or like so whatever, kind of and, and everybody was like cool about it. And I remember like, or like you know, even like heroin playing with Unbroken and stuff. So it was always kind of like a, a weird thing. Like you were always like, everyone that's like friends just plays, and so then you then you're never like, it's not like all you know metal or all like punk or all whatever. It was just fucking everything together, and, and I think that was like kind of like this really interesting point because then then you could go and like pick things like ooh like the drummer for that band that you know like that and that's the jam or whatever and then you, you kind of like start noticing like elements that you normally wouldn't pay attention to or, or be exposed to you know sure. and so that was I think that I would like to say it's a saying thing but I, I don't think it is because I mean it happened like you know like on tour in Mexico we, that's where I met Jung Singh who's the who was the drummer for All Leather and it was I was like you know kind of trying to figure out like how to work something out with him and like have him play like a you know electronic drum set um, and then make that thing happen you know because he was like definitely like playing like sort of like disco like kind of dancey drum sure. beats and we're like oh that's but like let's make it like really weird and and you know and like so there's like you know there's Nick and there's Jung and whoever and so I mean I don't know if it's like a geographical thing or just like like a weird thing or something you know like like right. or like a people that are just open to whatever because because right. there is like that like mindset where like you're only supposed to do this and then like that then you get limited you know it's kind of like when you ask someone how to how does this pedal work you're like fuck it who cares like just do whatever like as long as it sounds cool to you to you right now when you when you <clears throat> got into this stuff like what was the this stuff meaning pedals and effects and stuff just outside of <clears throat> a, a guitar into an amp or bass into an amp what what was the first 
thing that grabbed you? I mean, I'm assuming it wasn't like a Eric Clapton solo with a wall on pedal or something. <laughs> Probably like just gnarly distortion. You know, like I remember getting the first Born Again 7 inch. Um, and it was just like you almost couldn't really hear any notes, you know. It just sounded like, like a tractor or something. And I was like, "Oh, that sounds cool," you know, and like so evil. And that that was kind of like the main thing. I was like, "You could really fuck up your sound." And I remember like, you know, I think I was probably fourteen or fifteen when that seven inch came out. And I remember my mom saying like, "What is this shit?" You know, it just it just sounds like. <laughs> and I was like, "I know." And I'm like that's yeah, great. Totally, yeah, yeah. Like, I want to do that. I was like, Why? <laughs> you know. So so when when you started using this stuff, was it immediate or did you? dick around in your room with it for a long time before you decided to bring it into the band or was it just like right it was kind of just like it was, yeah i mean i think with the locust like you know bobby and i were always just like grabbing shit or like like finding something and just like let's see what happens you know and like swapping shit like there's been a lot of times where we you know we'd change pedals and <clears throat> like oh this isn't working for me you just take it or like hey you haven't used that pedal for you know a month can i try it now right, or right. something and so it was always kind of just like what and then you know, just like a way to kind of grow from it, you know what I mean? Because I remember like he had a delay pedal that he wasn't using for a while. And I was like, oh, it's, I love the sound of that. It's so cool. Like that whole like sort of surfy sound or something. I was like, let me try it. And I just remember like having this delay pedal and wanting to use it so bad. But the, the, the Locust stuff was so dense and so sort of like fast. There was never like a, a, a riff where I could use a delay pedal, you know, it'd be like, Bleh! and then like I had to go away and do this next thing, you know, and right. it just... So I, I was like, ah, oh, I want to use it, but it, but it's just not practical unless I was to play in a different band, you know. And so it was kind of just like learning what would and wouldn't work. Right. Like, I, I love the idea of practicality when it comes to your music or your setup. <laughs> <laughs> I love thinking that you're like thinking about that. Yeah. <laughs> and that makes sense to me, actually. I mean, I get it totally that, you know, you find your thing and what, what it means to be practical to you. Now, did you... You've kind of used a lot of the same stuff for a long time. I mean, I feel for like the most part, this has so become. So you found like, yeah. the the sound. Like it's yeah. not like you're still screwing around all the time trying to find new stuff. It's no, like you occasionally. Have your voice. But occasionally, I'm like, oh, let me try this. Like, uh, you know, I just um, met uh, this guy from Zvex, and he's he modded like this weird distortion, or he modded actually. I think it's the uh, boss, like the orange distortion. He's like just wait dude it's fucked up you know and like and i'm like all right like i'm, I'm ready for it you know because yeah. i have this one that's just like yeah you know i mean it works for me the yellow one yeah. yeah but it's just and it was like kind of like an accident i i i used to use a, a big muff and, and i and i and i broke it at a show and i needed a starship pedal and well, i forgot what city i was in but i remember like going into guitar center and they're like we don't have those like you know th this is my choice you know and right. i was like well fuck, i need it so i'll buy this and then i kind of just like figured out a way to make a setting and just was like, ah, all right, I can, and then it, like, that was, that kind of, like, stuck, you know, I was like, yeah. I, because, because especially, especially back then and still kind of now, I can't really afford it, I can't, like, just go buy, like, a lot of shit, I've never, like, gotten any kind of sponsorships or anything, so it's like, if I buy this, like, I'm stuck with it, you know, and so, I mean, this is, another interesting thing is, like, with the Line 6 pedals, those buttons are so temperamental and break and, oh, yeah. and with Bobby and I oh, yeah. using those oh, yeah. there's been so many times where we would buy them go to you know like the motel that we're staying at and we gut them you know and take the nice new top and return it so oh, shit. that's happened like yeah. I, I mean I, hey. <laughs> I, I thought Nick was the only guy who did yeah. that that's yeah. awesome yeah. I've probably done that probably at least 10 times yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> And, and and thank you, Guitar Center, because you have 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can just get through yeah. a whole tour if you have a credit card. So, Dude, those pedals are lifetime <laughs> warranty with that trip. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and they should be. Yeah. 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 Yes, yeah. yes, uh, yes uh, thank still, you. It's, it's, like, it's like they've had that design for like 15 years or something, and they haven't changed it, but they it still breaks. And everyone yeah. knows they break. Yeah. Like every professional or yeah. touring person is like, yeah, these things are great, but they always break. I well, that's figure that out. Line six. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> dude, we we <laughs> trashed them pretty much. <laughs> but th whatever, you know what I was gonna say. Do you ever? I always have problems with line six pedals in, in Europe. Even though like you can use the converters or whatever, I I you get those all those red lights lighting up at one time, and you're like I'm fucked. Yeah. And I stopped using it with power supplies. I just started buying batteries. Batteries. Yeah. There's and, been many times where we've done that too. Yeah, because you just because any weirdness in the electricity. Wolf. Like playing a squat or something, and yeah. just a little bit off, like I don't know, whatever, 
however many percentage or something. Right. You're just like, there goes that. <laughs> or like you'll you'll click it on and you know it'll go on and off. And you're like, whoa, wait a minute, like it turned <laughs> off by itself. You know. Like, <laughs> so. And, it, and especially like for like when the locust was doing, I'd like you know turn on something and it, and I'd be like, holy shit, it's off. Oh wait, I'm on the next part. You know, like I'm like, oh, <laughs> like where am I? Like, you know, it's. Okay, now I see a, I see a good transition here from, okay, we're talking about line six pedals that you can get at any guitar center. We're talking about this yellow boss thing that you accidentally ended up with. Multi-effect. Right. But I just use it for distortion. Right. Only. And then we have over in this corner, like one of the most rare, holy grail, sought after, bizarre pieces of equipment maybe ever. The Schumann. The Schumann PLL. Yeah. And... I think it's hilarious that that's on the board with this and it obviously, I mean, I think you were the first person who ever told me about this many, many years ago that you were looking for one. No, I wasn't even looking for one. Oh, I, 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 met, knew about I met Schumann on a whim in New York at, at the shop. Um, I forgot what it's called. It was like on like, um, by, it was by that know, menu North know, Six. Uh, main, drag. main drag. Main drag. I went there to get something simple. Like I think I needed picks or a, a strings or something. And, and, and everyone kept like raving about this guy, Schumann, he's got this weird shit. And I was, I went in there and there was a Dan Armstrong and I was looking at that and then somehow like I got sucked into the talking to Schumann. He's like, he's like, well, it's made for guitar mainly, but here, check it out. And like, I remember like two things, like I was in between sound check and like the show, I didn't have much time. So I was like, I gotta make this quick. And the other thing was it was 500 bucks, which is, was still is and definitely way the fuck out of my price range at that point. Sure. This was like, fuck, maybe like 15 years ago, you know, and I was like, yeah. I, I was like, $500, you know, for anything, um, you know, like, aside from rent, seems crazy, you know, and so right. I remember, like, he played it, and I was like, oh my god, like, what is that, like, this is crazy, and he's like, it does this and this, and there was, that, like, an adapter that went to it, and I was like, w which ended up breaking, and which is, I didn't really use it that much, so there was, like, I was just tripping out, and I was like, all right, fuck, and I went back and borrowed a bunch of band fun, and I, and I bought it, not really knowing like really? the whole oh, okay. thing behind. I was like, I don't really even know what it does, but it looks sick and yeah. trust me, yeah. it sounds amazing. And so, <clears throat> and then the, this Did pretty you much have to beg the rest of the band to like. Let no, those they were they were you know they were kind of like what like that's <laughs> what the you spent how much you know like, they were like they were just like I mean we were all into it, that kind of shit. They're just yeah, like that's cool. Like just make sure you pay back. What band was that? It was with the Locust. And so this became like a huge part of uh, the Locust Safety Second Body Last, um, and that pretty much was like uh, in our set from then on out, like forever. And 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 the thing is, like, it, it's such a sort of like temperamental thing. If it broke, we wouldn't have to cut out like a ten minute long song. And, right. You know, you know, because that was like the yeah. It's, it's that like specific there's like this that huge that part in the middle that's just you know, it's like okay, well if that breaks like. That it'll just kind of not work, you know, like the song right. won't work, and so that was like a, a big deal. So it's it's broken a lot. I mean, even like a couple weeks ago, um, Dead Cross is playing, and Gabe s stepped right on it. And I'm like, fuck, like, oh, oh no, you know, he, you know like he's like wasted and falls, and just his foot just like crack. And I was like, oh shit, you know, anything but that. Yeah, Step like that one one that yeah, it wasn't on, but I was like, ah, oh, yeah, your your boot. So you know? what's the repair for it? The repair is to take it to Nelson from um, Trogotronic and just be like, please figure this <laughs> fucking mean, thing out. And he things, told me that it's an insane. But uh, yeah, these things haven't been made for like f at least 15 years. The guy disappeared. I heard there was only a, like 50 made originally. I think that's, I've heard that too. I and mean, these are so rare, so seldomly seen. And the guy who built it was like this crazy genius. He only sold them out of that one store, and they and then he disappeared. Yeah, he had problems, I and wish, he just kind of. I don't hope that, from him. I hope it's all true because I heard that he like <laughs> disappeared, not like died or nothing. Right, right. Just like disappeared. You're like, what the fuck? And it's crazy because like I paid five hundred bucks for it, and I've had people offer me three thousand dollars for sure, it. You know, and sure. I'm like, fuck, why that guy should just come out of the woodworks and cash in? Yeah, it's like a con. It's like the con, but the, the, way more fucked up than the <laughs> He made yeah, a distortion right, pedal too right. called the Lion that. Um, I think Pat Naker from who was in the original Liars lineup, and um, these are Powers and some other bands. He told me about that as just being this Holy Grail bass uh -huh. distortion pedal, and I've still never seen one of those. I don't think he. That makes sense because they were from the area. You yeah, know, like, yeah. I, I was just lucked out. It was really like the timing, you know. I mean, the, the, he this this one that he sold me was like he was still putting it together, and which makes sense because then when I've taken it to 
to Nelson to fix, he's like, dude, this is bullshit. He's like full of goop and like nothing <laughs> makes it. He's like, it just looks fucked and like is not like a healthy pedal, you know? To, <laughs> to, be, like, to be like dependable on that, like what you're no, saying, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's like yeah. a bad idea. And so then it he's makes sense. He's a scientist, right? He, he was. He, he looked and acted totally crazy. He had like, no offense to the guy because I think he's badass and I, and I really do like, I did like him, but he didn't seem like you know, he eats like I, I. He should have been like, like on our bells coast to coast or something. You know, like right. you're just yeah. like what? Like he just seemed like a weird in his human own, being. Like, in his own, yeah, yeah. hybrid up human his own being tree. or something. Yeah, <laughs> hybrid human. Like being. he probably went to another planet. That's probably where yeah, he went. Probably went. <laughs> yeah, he just kind of went to wherever David Bowie and Prince went. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's probably making gear for them right now. Yeah. <laughs> but um, Bastard. you consider that you've I've heard you refer to that as like your secret weapon. Secret weapon, but I also, I mean, this is like, that's such a funny term, because I've also referred to people as a secret weapon, but the two purple line sixes is also kind of like a secret weapon, too. And that's like, the way you use probably. Yeah. I mean, You're right, like right, exactly. An accident. Yeah. You were the first person I heard using those in an interesting way. Probably, did you get those around Plague Soundscapes then? Before that. Probably not too right long before yeah, that. Yeah, no, no. Yeah, but it was, and that was the thing is like, I mean, Bobby and I were like really, really into Line 6, and we had um, all mixed up the distortion one, the, you know, the blue one and the green one, but I, the thing was like, again, they fucking keep breaking, so I was like, oh, I need to buy a backup one in case it breaks, and then I threw the backup one on my pedal board, because it was like, only <laughs> like one was working on one, and one was working on another, but then I started like running them through each other, I mean like, oh, there we go, no one's gonna fucking get that sound, <laughs> you know, and that was kind of like the... That, I mean, that's like Mick from Orthrealm, like running through two, two or three two, distortion uh, pedals. Yeah, one of the heavy metal pedals. Yeah, I think he ran through three zones. at one point. You're like, what? He only had metal zones, <laughs> metal, which is probably my favorite pedal board I've ever seen. And my second favorite is probably the all leather guitar pedal board. Oh, uh, yeah. Right? Which was, I think, at one point, like three or four purples. And the and the big M nine thirteen. Yeah, yeah. It was, and which he had all loaded with purple. Yeah, and, like, like he had the big one just, and those and two of those. And I remember him telling me like, yeah, for certain sounds, it's like three different settings run through, like yeah. like three different purple settings run through one another, and that's what makes that sound. And I'm just like, that's the best thing I've ever heard. We should get Line Six to just give us a bunch and run like, like you did the like hundred pedal thing, just do like. I don't know, at least 10 line 6 purple yeah. bottles. <laughs>